Good morning, YouTube. Well, I'm back at the tundra. Tires at the shop. But I found some really cheap brake pads for uh, 33 bucks. So we're going to try it. Because the truth is, I only get about, doesn't matter what kind of pads I put on this thing. I only get about uh, 20, 25,000 miles and they're shot. I think I'm just coming down the road too hot. Yeah, that's it. Let's just blame it on me coming down the road too hot. I told you I'd bring you back if I found anything interesting. So what you're looking at here is the uh, front McPherson whatever tower shock absorber. Come on now, focus. That bushing on the bottom is shot. I don't know if you can see it. But it, it's pretty well toast. So, um, looks like it's due for a new set of, uh, whatever they're called, struts. I'm actually, I this is, what, the two, third time? I just buy the whole package. And if I had kept the paperwork, these should have been a lifetime guarantee. But I didn't keep the paperwork. So... Tough shit, next case. I need some new, st new struts because that bushing right there is shot and on the other side it's no better. Okay. I don't really know what I'm doing or seeing. I'm operating a little bit blind. In fact, I'm just gonna close the door. So, first step is uh, take your big channel locks, adjust them out a little bit, and then see if you can't just give these uh, pads a little bit of a squeeze, because that'll help you when you start doing your prying. Just find a little spot. Try to give it a squeeze. Okay. The next step is pull the pins. One. There are these tiny little cotter pins. See if I can make the pliers small enough to do it. Yep. There it is. Two. Then your next step is to... Uh, Get the pins out. Take a screwdriver, whatever you've got, just give them a whack. And then you can come over to this side and you just pull them out. Now make sure you notice the location of that retaining clip in the center. One, drop them in the box. Two, they're out. Then this pin and this is where a screwdriver can come in handy. Just push it in and it comes out. Fairly simple. Remember, it's uh, orientation just by putting it on the lid or something like I did here. Okay, next step, let's get them pads out. I'm going to set you to the side and I'm just going to yank out these pads right off. see I hope you can see what's going on there good enough because it takes two hands sometimes to wiggle the pads out <clears throat> no it appears I did not crush enough to uh, release the pressure see it takes two hands really to give these things a good squeeze <clears throat> all right there now I know they'll just come right out because I've done these pads so many times every 25,000 miles. This side's actually a little bit better. You can see the uh, wear bar, but the other side, both of them are smooth. You know, 
I did the same damn thing the last time I installed these. There's no wear bar. Oh, yeah, here we go. There is one. Okay, so I did it right last time. But this side wasn't talking to me. Anyways, before we can reassemble, I'm just taking the uh, plier handle. You don't have to go inside and uh, do anything with your uh, brake reservoir. That's just fine. This is why you have put the bolts on, because when you start doing this pulling, everything wants to slide just a little bit. Ooh. Now this one here doesn't want to let me put the pliers in. There we go. There we go. Just work them all gently. Don't use anything sharp or anything that will damage the boots or your hydraulic seals that are in these things because you don't want to have to replace the calipers. That's just a waste of time and money. Remember, we're doing this on the cheap. So all it is is drop in one, drop in two. Now that's loose, but I really don't care. In fact, it is so loose I could put some of these shims back in. Let's see how much this tightens it up. The other side really didn't need shims. There we go. Where's the other pad here? Floating around in here hiding from me. Okay, so we put a shim on this side. Slip it in. Let's see. Now I'm using the pad to just kind of open up a little bit of space to uh, let that shim in. But it doesn't seem to want to uh, have enough room for that. So I'm going to try loosening this bolt. This will let the drum, or the disc I should say, come a little bit forward and wiggle onto the other one. Nope. This side is not getting a shim. And uh, that's life. That's life. Like I said, these things get changed for me every 20, 25,000 miles. I've eaten up a set. This time I actually found new hardware in the uh, toolbox for the springs. So you slip the spring on, push it through some more, drive it through if you need to. Don't miss your uh, don't miss your other hole. There you go. And then once it's through, you're jamming. Take a cotter pin and just find that little hole almost by feel if you're like me and you're blind. There it is. I believe that's it right there. Okay, your final step. You know something? I screwed up. I put this uh, clip in upside down. I should really be done this much faster if I was paying attention to my work. 
screwing up left and right. There we go. Now it's in. And these will clip the way they're supposed to. One, two, just like that. If you can get the, uh, there we go. Now put in the little chaining clip. I'm really just scratching around for it. There we go. The bottom one, though, is really super simple. Just drive it through. If you can change your tire, and you just saw me struggle and do it wrong, you can uh, change your brakes. Now, you're gonna, when you first get in the truck, they're gonna be a little squishy, mushy. You know, not right, because, uh, there's the hole. Trying to figure out where the hole is. Trying to orient it so it's down a little bit. Bingo. That's it. Brake job done. Put the wheel on. It's over. This is what the completed assembly looks like. There's new clips there, new pads, plenty of meat. Even if both of the wear th indicators are on the other side, it doesn't matter. These pads will work just fine the way they are. And that's how, and that's how the half-ass mechanic does it. I wouldn't settle for this with somebody else doing it, but for me, it'll be fine. All gonna come apart when I change these shocks. So, this ain't even a big deal. Wow, these two pads, though, have worn considerably different. The other side is exactly the same, but this side has worn much different. Maybe having just the pad on one side, it will uh, make things feel a little better. Well, that's all held in by pins. Yeah, that's it. New brakes installed. And I don't know if I showed you, but look how chewy that is. See? That should be nice rubber, not chewy chewy. I was going to do a tire rotation on this side, but I don't really care. Uh, since we're getting kind of sloppy, this is close enough. This tire looks just fine. They're both street tires. It'll all leak. People being way too picky about their rides. Ugh. Me included. So this way, Brakes are done, real actual work time, maybe an hour total with changing tires and everything. I've been screwing around a bit.
drop it down, tighten it up, it's done. And the last thing, always remember, tighten your wheel nuts. Listen, I mean, seriously, if you can take off the tire, changing the brakes on these first gen Tundras and Sequoias is gravy. Because all you're doing is pulling pins and throwing shit in. You don't even have to take off a caliber. You're not touching a brake line. It's a very simple repair and again if unsure make sure you tighten every one of these bad boys there we go and you're allowed to put the cap on and call it done new brakes less than an hour 35 bucks. I'll keep you posted what it's going to cost to throw in some shocks.